August 7th, 6 a.m. I don't remember what day we got here to this hotel. Then I'd be able to tell you how many days we have known this dude and how attached he has become. It's... We can't have been here very long, though, but I don't remember what the date was. Um... Fuck, I don't even remember how to save. I remember it was a weird button. I gotta start pressing every single freaking button so I can find the freaking... Nope, not that. No, I don't want to do that. There we go. Oh, it's you. Morning. I feel much better now. I thought I was gonna die yesterday. It's the first time that's ever happened to me. My stomach hurt and I felt terrible. But after I went to the hospital and slept all day, I somehow recovered. That's good. Hey, Hina, what did you end up doing with that strawberry tart I didn't eat? Huh? Oh, the one Isora made? I gave it to the hungry white cat who comes to the garden all the time. It seemed to really like it. Well, it is a wild cat after all, so it probably doesn't get sweets like that very often. Hmm. Why do you ask? It sounds like he doesn't know what happened to the white cat. Yeah, I can understand. I want to tell him, hey, you fucking killed the cat. No reason. I just felt bad for not eating it. It was put to good use, so don't worry. That cat seemed happy after it ate it and was running around the garden. It was running around? Ah, oh, this isn't good. Oh, Hino, are you okay? What are you going to do about work? Uh, actually, I'm not feeling 100% yet, sorry, but could you tell Yua or Yuki to give me the afternoon shift instead? Yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm gonna lie down for a bit. I hope you feel better. I feel bad for Hino, but I think I'll go ahead and keep yesterday's events a secret from him. Around noon, I sat on a bench in the garden to wait and wait for Isora. Just as we promised, I wait for him to finish cleaning up the cafe so we can head out after. I wonder if he'll be here soon. Huh? Are you going somewhere? Yeah, I'm just waiting for Isora. Are you heading out too, Yuki? Yeah, I'm going to get the ingredients we ordered from the general store, and I'll do a little shopping while I'm at it. That's great. I admire how devoted you are to your work. Well, we take turns doing the shopping, although Miss Susano is rather unreliable, so I'm always uneasy when it's her turn. Oh yeah, just the other day she left all that stuff back at the store. I'd love it if she would stop forgetting things and loitering on her way back, but... A while back, Isora ordered kiwis, but she came back with chili beans. <laughs> That's cute. Yuki, you're so passionate about your work, even though you're still a middle schooler. I'm really impressed. Keep giving it your all. I don't think there's any need for such praise. You should give it your all on your date, too. Huh? How did you know? Your hair is beautifully styled today, and you look especially cute, so I thought that might be the case. Sh sheesh, Yuki, but thanks. I say, instinctively patting his head. Hey, don't. Actually, you're being rather gentle. But that does kind of tickle, so I'd appreciate if you'd stop. Huh? Oh, sorry. Everyone does it, so I just... I know you don't have any bad intentions. Don't be so dismayed. Okay, good. Um, okay then. Have a good trip, Yuki. Yeah, I'll be going then. Yuki turns around, waves to me, and disappears beyond the hedge. Yuki's so cute. Sorry to make you wait. As Yuki leaves, Isora appears. Hey, were you just talking with someone? Yeah, with Yuki. He just left to go shopping. Oh, then. Nothing will be forgotten. You're never quite sure with Yua. Is she that bad at remembering things? She's done it a bunch since I've been here. Let's see. One, two, three, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, sorry. Could you lend me your hand? Isora, shouldn't we get going? Oh, right. We're wasting time. Okay, let's go. We leave the Furinkan Hotel and walk on a path with an... And walk on a path with an... an <laughs> we leave the Furinkan Hotel and walk on a path with an unobstructed view. Yeah, I can't fucking read. That's homeschool, you know? I'm homeschool. I can't help it. Uh, huh? I don't see Yuki anywhere. He's a slow walker, so I thought we might catch up with him. Yeah, maybe he was in a hurry. As we walk down the lane, we find a black car parked along the road. The car suddenly starts up, whizzes by us, and disappears. I haven't seen that car around here before. I wonder if it belongs to one of the concert staff members or something. What would they be doing in a small country lane like this? Yeah. Even as I reply, I'm overcome by an unspeakable uneasiness. What's this feeling? It's like something's weighing heavily on my chest. Seems though Tanashi Pond is in the north of town, so we walk down the main street together. Isora is happily humming away, which we pass by the general store. We peek inside to see if Yuki's around. Huh? He's not here. You're right. He shouldn't have gotten here before us, though. We didn't pass him, did we? Oh, Isora, are you shopping with your girlfriend today? You make such a wonderful couple. 
Ma'am, that's a couple, not... I say, even as I realize it's not the part I should be correcting. <laughs> Aren't we, though? We're so wonderful. We suit each other perfectly. Sorry, I forget about that. Yuki! Oh, right. Hey there, ma'am. Has Yuki come by here? It was his turn to do the shopping today. Maybe Yuki has been kidnapped. Little Yuki? No, he hasn't. That's strange. He left before we did. Maybe he went to another store before coming here. He's famous in this town. He could be caught up talking to people. Famous? Here, take these Okune Panda red and white manju buns to celebrate your wedding! <laughs> Wait, huh? To celebrate our wedding? Um, Miham, why would you give us a wedding gift? Aha, uh -huh, we'll take them. Okay, live happily ever after now. Wh what? Quit teasing me, you two. <laughs> We're just joking. The general store lady has always been like that. Doesn't even bother with her name. She's like the general store lady. You've lived here your whole ass life, and you're just like the general store lady. I'm sure she really appreciates that. She always refers to everyone else by name, and she's just the general store lady. Poor fucking lady. Still, I wonder if Yuki's alright. He often drops by other places while he's out. Maybe he's talking to Yasu. So I think he's probably fine. Hmm. Hey, did you know that this place used to be a famous hot springs town long ago? The town flourished around the hot springs. Our restaurant was packed with hot springs guests and workers, too. It's alright, you're like... 17 or 18 or something and you're like long ago like and but you're like ah oh, yeah i remember this so it wasn't that long ago many people in power didn't like so many outsiders coming into town namely the marakumo family what's so bad about outsiders coming to town what do the marakumo family do that they're able to make money with no tourists because this is a tourist town but they currently do everything they can to keep tourists out so what are the Marakuma family doing to maintain their fortune? There are old people who want to control the town for themselves. I guess you could call them conservative or insular. My mom always complained about how it was the Marakuma family that destroyed the hot spring district of town. Our restaurant had to close because the hot spring district became deserted and hardly any customers came there anymore. They run a brothel? Okay, but that's not how economies work. You need, like, outside cash flow. I hear there's a lot of money in that. There can be, uh, there's been no sign of a brothel yet in this town, but maybe that's where they take all the people that disappear in the mountains. My brother has been enslaved in a brothel somewhere. Oh no. <laughs> For better or worse, the Markuma family runs this town. I'm the perfect example of that. Even if I'm doing it to help my mom, right now all my income comes from the Markumos. It seems like a lot of people- Yeah, isn't- Isn't the dude who owns the hotel one of the Markumos? Why does he run a hotel, but he doesn't want outsiders in the town? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Seems like a lot of people secretly think that Yuki will change the controlling authoritative attitude of theirs. Why are they letting Yuki work and live at the Furinkan Hotel then? Who knows? Ask the Marakuma family. Maybe they think it's easier to keep an eye on him that way. He's a dangerous element to them. Would they really go- would they really go that far? I think there's a possibility that they would. For example, they destroyed the hot springs district in town, making the Furinkan Hotel the only place to stay. The only one running the hotel is a Marakumo. Why? Don't you think it makes things a lot easier for them that way? They can keep watch on any outsider that comes into town. Isora's expression is mixed. Well, you shouldn't worry about it. It has nothing to do with you. Look, you can see it now. Isora says, pointing ahead, I can see a thick grove of trees, but I don't see Otanashi Pond yet. We'll go through the promenade between those trees. Come on, this way. Whoa, it's so beautiful. There's a wood deck cafe by the side of the pond, which seems to be a place for locals to relax. There are moms walking with their children. I sit down on a bench beneath the tree, but Isora doesn't sit down with me. Instead, he's squirming about doing something. Isora? Okay, time to get the tea ready. Ta-da! Whoa! Out of nowhere, a thin, insulated thermos with some snacks appear in his hands. Where were you keeping those? You're like a magician. <laughs> and for today's baked goods, I have financier cakes. I don't know what that is. The three flavors are almond, green tea, and chocolate. Oh, that sounds good. 
Would you be all right with Earl Grey tea, mademoiselle? I'll leave it up to you. I'm sure you're going all out, all the way out here. With a flowing movement, he takes off the cup lid and pours the tea in. Now drink up. Thanks. You're welcome. He gazes at me happily. I take a bit of cake first and sip some tea. These are great. I'm happy, but will I end up getting fat if I stay with this sword? <laughs> I think as I stuff my cheeks that I see a mother and child playing together a short distance away. Ka, we're going home. Okay. The boy runs back to her. Oh. He goes too fast and trips. Mwah. Tears fill his eyes and he starts crying. His mother runs over and tries to soothe him, but he doesn't stop crying. Did he get hurt? Is he okay? Leave it to me. Before I can get up and walk over, he sort of dashes over to them. Are you okay, Ka? Does it hurt? Show me where it hurts. Is he alright? Huh? Oh, sorry. The young mother looks back and forth between his sword and her child, looking slightly bewildered. Mwah. I'd like to see if he's hurt, but... She tries to touch him, but the boy won't let her. Leave it to me. Huh? Just let me touch your child, bam. It'll be okay, I promise. Just... Resorima! What the fuck? He suddenly yells loudly. Is he casting some kind of magic spell? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Ah! The boy jumps in surprise and stops crying. And so he crouches down to get his eye level and he grins. Okay, watch me super closely, got it? Suddenly, there's a piece of candy between his forefinger and thumb of his right hand. Don't take candy from strangers! This man poisoned a cat and another man yesterday. Don't take candy from him! More and more pieces of candy appear until they're between all of his fingers. I'm gonna keep going! Here! He nimbly moves both his hands left and right, then holds his clenched fists in front of the boy. Now, which hand are they in? Oh, is there something poking out from his left hand? The candy is clearly poking out between his left thumb. At least it seems like there is. That one. The boy seems perplexed, of course. He points to his sword's left hand. Nope, not quite too bad, he says, opening his hand to reveal no candies there. Huh? I thought for sure there was. Then that one? The boy points to his sword's right fist. Haha, <laughs> I wonder. He opens his right hand, but there aren't any pieces of candy in it either. What? They're gone! The boy inspects the sword's hands curiously. The correct answer is, they're in your pocket! The candy that disappeared from Sora's hand somehow turned up in the boy's breast pocket. You sitting there peeling up this child's breast pocket to put candy in there without anyone noticing. It's Sora. I don't like him. I know I'm just thinking the worst of him, but I don't really like him. What? When did you do that? Whoa, you're right. You can have those also. Here, have a piece of cake. Eat it after you get home, okay? Wow, thanks, mister. Baffled by Sora's magic tricks, the boy has totally forgotten about his fall. Now then, where does it hurt? Uh, it only hurts a little. I'm fine. Alright, what a good kid. I'm going to touch it a little, okay? Get your hands off the child, Asora! The boy nods. You just skinned it a little. He should be able to handle that. He pulls out wet wipes from somewhere and brushes off the boy's skin knee. Oh, thank you. Don't worry about it, he grins. Once it stops hurting, jump by the food and cafe and I'll give you some more cake as a present. Really? In that case, it doesn't hurt anymore, so let's go. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. You're welcome anytime. Thank you so much. We should come. You should come by to play sometime. See you, mister. The mother bows a number of times. The boy waves his hand energetically as they leave. Huh. I find new respect for the young magician before me. <laughs> Now, since my magic trick went off without a hitch, why don't we go on for a ride in that boat over there? I doubt that scene would bother me if I actually liked Isora, but I just don't. I'm not a fan of him, so. I feel like this is going to be hard for me to get through, to be honest, because I just don't really like him that much. And I'm on his route now, so he's going to be everywhere. And I'm trying to get the good ending. So. <laughs> there are a number of boats floating by the side of the pond. It seems they're free for anyone to use throughout the day. Doesn't seem like there's anyone watching over the boats. I wonder if it's okay to use them. Go for a ride on a boat. Don't go for a ride the fucking boat. I'm fine with that, but is it okay? It's fine, it's fine. I'll handle the rowing. 
He says, taking my hand and leading me to the small pier. When we get into the rocking boat, Sora grabs the oars like he's done this before. He moves the oars skillfully. Maybe he's used to it because he wants to lift here. The boat easily glides over the water. First, I'm afraid of how much the boat is swaying, but I steadily get used to its movement. Finally, the boat slides to the middle of the pond. What do you think? Pretty fun, right? Yeah, the water here is so beautiful. About your brother. Huh? Oh, yeah. It doesn't seem like anyone around the hotel ever saw him, so I'm wondering if he hid himself somewhere else. Right. It may be a country town, but I feel like there are a surprisingly high number of places to hide, like in the old part of town, for example. Yeah, there are plenty of places to hide in a country town, so long as, like, no one's looking for you. Like, yeah, it might not be that easy to hide if someone's looking for you, but he was just, like, you know, visiting. No one was gonna be like, oh, where is he? Of course, they're, we're surrounded by woods. There's plenty of places to hide. It used to thrive as part of the Hot Springs District, but now it's like a ghost town. Did my brother have any reason to hide? That, I don't know. I don't know either. If I had just talked with my brother more, I'm filled with regret. You know, Hotanashi Pond is really quiet, as you can see, which is why its name literally means Silence Pond. I've heard that when people fall in, they never come back out again. It's also said to be a pond where people sink without a sound. He's gonna push me in the water. His expression changes. Isora? It's the perfect place to hide someone. <laughs> oh my god. We're gonna get murdered. A shiver runs down my spine. Maybe your brother? Stop! I tried to stand up, which makes the boat rock a lot. Why are you trying to stand up, you fucking idiot? Isora loses his balance. Wait, whoa! Ah! Everything happens so fast, I can't do anything. Isora falls on top of me to protect me. My vision blurs. A soft, sweet smell tickles my nose for an instant. The boat can be swayed without capsizing. I slowly begin to open my eyes again. I see myself and someone lying on top of me, trying to protect me. Isora's large eyes are right in front of me. Ah! We're both inches away from each other. I try to move. We can touch at any moment. I, I can't do anything. So his gaze seems somewhat embarrassed. When I look down, I see his thin, perfect lips hanging ever so slightly open. Kill him. I would like to kill him. <laughs> my cheeks gradually grow hot. My body suddenly feels like it's burning. Um, th that is... I try to say something, but it isn't coherent. What should I do? As my gaze wanders, I hear a deep sigh from above. Your eyes, they have a mysterious light to them. Let me go. <laughs> Staring into them like this, it's like I'm going to get sucked in. Ah. His handsome nose draws so close we almost touch. I stiffen up as if frozen in place, unable to move even an inch. I can't keep a straight face when reading scenes like this out loud. Want to fall in together just like this? He rocks the boat. I find myself drawing back. Just kidding. Woo, that was close. He jokes around, paying no attention how flustered I am. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. He says bashfully. No, my body just moved on its own. I'm glad we're safe. He takes a tub of my hair and strokes it. <laughs> then he brings it up to his mouth. Oh. He stops holding that pose. I stare at him blankly, then return to my senses and blush. Um. Yes. We should, uh. Hmm. I mean, this position is. It's bad for my heart to have him lying on Tommy. His handsome face just inches from, inches from mine. Oh, right. Isora, um, I'm trying to tell him that I want him to hurry up and get the fuck off me, but he continues to stare at me without changing his expression. Then finally, the distance between us slowly closes, his breath, eyelashes, and lips, they all bear down on me. Just a little longer. He begs me flirtatiously, but his actions are completely selfish. Yeah, she's asking you to fucking get off of her, and you're like, oh, 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 oh. fuck, dude. Still, I find myself unable to resist him. No, punch him in the gut. He quietly brings my hair to his lips and kisses it without a small smack with a small smacking sound. You don't like that? For a moment, I'm captivated by his passionate gaze. All at once, I'm deaf to everything around me and my whole world becomes his Zora. <laughs> I want to abandon myself in this sweet, melting atmosphere. Would that be okay? Unable to reply, I turn my head away. It's not fair, asking me that. My voice shakes, not knowing what will happen next. I squeeze my eyes shut and wait. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? It's a romance game, dude, but I don't really like this dude, so I'm very much just like, make it stop, make it stop. <laughs> Did he ask for consent? No, not seemingly. Considering that he asked, she asked him to get off multiple times, and he's just sitting there like, let me smell your hair. Like, ah, I don't, I don't like this at all. My voice shakes, not knowing what will happen next. I squeeze my eyes shut and wait. After falling silent for a while, he takes a breath and slowly backs off from me. Sorry. 
I open my eyes again. Clouds from the piercing summer sky. And we've only known this dude like a week or two. Why would you close your eyes? She probably closed her eyes praying that it was all a bad dream and that he'd disappear if she will reopen them. <laughs> Isora and I decide to return to the hotel. The sun is already pretty low in the sky. By the way. Yes? Exactly which part of strawberries do you hate? Everything about them. They, they remind me of you specifically because you always try to make me eat strawberries and I don't fucking like you. Go away. Huh? What's this about all of a sudden? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe their smell? So if you didn't know there were strawberries in dessert and you couldn't smell or taste them, would you be able to eat it? What kind of question is that? Yes, you... Hmm, I've never eaten something like that, so I don't know. I guess I'd probably be fine. Why are you so insistent on trying to make her eat strawberries? I'm not even really sure why I hate them. There's probably some deep-rooted trauma in her backstory that she doesn't remember as to why she hates strawberries. Hmm... He looks sad. Might be because of that. Huh? Oh, it's nothing. So it's something to do with him is the reason she fucking hates strawberries. These guys are Pepega. <laughs> oh, it's nothing. His smile returns. Still, if you did manage to get over your hatred of them, you'd be happy, right? Hmm, yeah. There are in a lot of desserts, after all. If you'd like, I could try to come up with a strawberry dessert that might work for you. When you'd like. Oh, don't worry. I won't force you to eat it. Yeah, like you fucking forced your fucking eyelashes to come down and tickle my face and grab my hair and all this shit. Especially the sleuth. Yeah, fucking sleuth thought. She is Pepega as hell. I, so many protagonists in these games are though. They are like, she is better than some. Some of them, and she's, she's kind of rough. I'm not a big fan of her. Um. Thanks. If you're willing to work that hard, then I'll do my best to try to like it. You don't owe him jack shit, babe. You are your own person. Okay, I'll make an amazing dessert that you're bound to love. I don't know why I hate strawberries, but I really want to learn to like them. I nod, grinning at him. As the sword and I talk, we question the locals, but... We couldn't find anything out about your brother today, either. Well, we didn't have that much time to ask around. You were busy... Smelling my hair in the middle of the lake. <laughs> That's true, but I ask a lot of people at the hotel. Otanashi Pond is a tourist area, so I don't think you would have come here. Maybe one of the forbidden areas. But you can't go in those, right? Yes, they're forbidden. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe that's exactly why your brother hasn't been found. No, I'm totally overthinking things. Like, dude! The about forbidden areas, the rumor is that you go and disappear without a trace if you go in them. That would be my first thought as, oh, my brother disappeared in this town. He probably went into one of the forbidden areas, but you're like, oh, I'm overthinking things. Oh, sorry, sorry. I don't mean to upset you. The boss or someone else in the Maraguma family might know something. Yeah, but even if they do, we can't say for sure that they're not involved. You mean they abducted my brother? I don't think that's possible. Really? Well, I guess we shouldn't jump to conclusions. I'm pretty sure they abducted Yuki, too. They're taking out the strong men in their life. He says, admonishing himself. We should be close to Main Street, huh? I need to stop clapping clapping for emphasis probably peaks my mic <laughs> what's that there's a crowd of people at the intersection yasu is standing in the middle of them i wonder what's going on oh no it's not gonna be a dead cat this time it's gonna be a dead yuki let's go check it out hey yasu what in the world is oh it's you two oh, i can't handle this whoa the lady from the general store peers behind yasu and pushes him out of the way oh hello you guys this is just terrible yuki's been spirited away Spirited away? You mean he's gone missing? Yes, I waited forever after you two left, but Yuki never showed up, so I got worried and called the Furinken Hotel. They said he wasn't there either, so I asked Yasu to go look for him. I know how you feel, ma'am, but don't you think you're getting ahead of yourself? He might have stopped in another store. I think we should wait a little longer for him to return. He's like 12. We do need to take this seriously, Yasu. He left the hotel shortly after noon, which means he's been gone over five hours. He said he was going to the general store, so if he never stopped there and he isn't at the hotel, something's definitely up. Hey, quit making such a big deal out of this! Kids get sidetracked all the time! Yasu, take this more fucking seriously. He'll probably show up all casual like and say I'm back! You stupid policeman! Yuki isn't a kid! Oh my god, she's beating the shit out of Yasu. Oh, hey lady, quit punching me, no fists allowed. And then Yua comes running up. 
Hey, idiot Yasu! Um, Yua, could you please not call me an idiot at a time like this? Look! Is that a shoe? Yua's holding a single loafer in her hand. I think this is Yuki's! It was in a bush on the side of the lane that leads to Furinkan Hotel. Whoa, that's gonna be difficult. Yasu, what did you just say? No, I mean, this is a challenging case. I can't wait to put my skills to use. How rude. You're excited that Yuki's gone missing? Beating the shit out of Yasu again. Ow, you keep hitting me no matter what I say. What could this mean? Only a shoe was found outside the hotel. Now that I think of it? After Yuki left? Right before Yuki left, I... What? Oh. Well, we saw that, we saw that car, if that's what this is gonna talk about. Now that I think about it, after he left the hotel? What? Come on, just say it. I tell her that I met with Yuki. I, after I met with Yuki, I saw a black car speed away. True, we didn't see him when we left the hotel. There's a clear view of the road, so I thought we'd at least see him ahead of us. I see, I get it. So you're saying... After Yuki left the hotel, he realized he wouldn't be able to care of everything, so he rented a black car and used it to go shopping. Why are you like this, Yasu? But then, wouldn't he be back already? How could Yuki drive a car? Yasu, could you do your job for once? I thought it was some good guesswork. Okay, come with me to the substation, and we'll put in a request to search for him. Alright, that's enough, everyone. Break it up. We, the police, and the vigilance committee will look for Yuki. What's this we, the police nonsense? You're the only one here. Um, could you please not say that? Okay, then. I'm going with Yasu. Can you look after the hotel? Yeah, sure. Yasu breaks up the crowd and takes Yua to the police substation. Isora and I rush back to the hotel.